Michael Walsh, a writer and content strategist at Publicist Sapien. Welcome to another episode of Life is Dataful on LinkedIn Live, where we discuss the ways data is affecting our lives. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about the evolution of New York City's subway map and how data awareness, or lack thereof, can result in significantly different experiences for people on public transit. In October 2020, the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, commonly called the MTA, unveiled the first major redesign in four decades of New York City's subway map. Brooklyn-based digital product agency Work & Co. designed and developed the live subway map pro bono with the MTA and the Transit Innovation Partnership. It's a dynamic map that reflects New York as it changes. This new interactive tool shows service changes, delays or closures, and train movements in real time. You can see the beta version of the live subway map at map.mta.info. The new map has a sleek and modern design. It's easy to wrap one's head around, but unlike the metro maps for other major cities, it didn't need to sacrifice geographic accuracy for simplicity and ease. By zooming in, you can see individual train lines, subway entrances, streets, parks, and other geographical markers. Over the course of 18 months, the MTA and Work & Co. accomplished something truly ambitious that wouldn't have been possible without digital technology. They created a subway map that's easy to understand and use, but also provides all the data travelers need for their trips. This had not been previously possible in the age of static paper maps. According to the MTA, the system has 472 stations and 6,684 600, 6, subway cars. The average weekday subway ridership is 5.5 million, and the annual ridership is 1.698 billion. The longest ride someone can take without changing trains is on the A train from 207th Street in Manhattan to Far Rockaway in Queens. That trip is more than 31 miles. The subway system is sprawling and services millions of people every day. Before going digital, it was impossible to get all of this data on a single map. Here's the current subway map with which New Yorkers are most familiar. It was designed by the Michael Hertz Associates design firm in the late 1970s. The goal was to provide a comfortable map with recognizable geography. It was pretty popular. This map more or less has been the same for decades despite minor alterations. But before that, back in 1972, New York launched an abstract and minimalist map by modernist designer Massimo Vignelli. This short-lived map was a lot like the current London tube map. The simple and clean design of mostly straight, boldly colored lines made navigation of the complex subway system easier. But it was abstract and didn't faithfully recreate the city's geography. There's a tension between the Vignelli map and the Hertz map. We have two different design philosophies. What's more important to you? geography and richness of data, or beauty and simplicity. The Vignelli map doesn't accurately depict locations throughout the city, but it is easier to navigate. A tourist could hop on a subway car and figure out which line would take them where they needed to go. The Hertz map more accurately depicts the city's geography, so travelers would know how far one station is from another, but it resulted in a more cluttered composition that could be difficult for visitors to sift through. Sarah Meyer, New York City Transit Chief Customer Officer said in a statement, every rider has had the experience where we get on a train one weekend, look up from our phones and see a place we didn't expect to see. When New Yorkers use this map, that will no longer happen. It wouldn't have been possible to offer the best from both maps without going digital. The live map, which is connected to the internet and updates in real time, lets New Yorkers have their cake and eat it too. It's simple and beautiful, yet geographically accurate. And it has as much or as little data as you need for your purposes. Thanks for joining us today on Life is Dataful. Please tune in next time on LinkedIn Live. Take care.